Hey everyone, uh, my name's Andy. My channel's Finding Value. If you find this content to be interesting, please subscribe and hit click the thumbs up button. Uh, I'm gonna go over a topic, it's called Energy Return on Energy Invested, E-R-O-E-I. And I think this is extremely important to know this because what it does is it ties our currency system to energy. And this is a link that not a lot of people uh, have made. So I'm gonna get into this, it's a little bit different clip. Uh, I think it's highly valuable to know this. So, energy return on energy invested, you need to know this. So what is it? Uh, it's the energy return on energy invested, or E-R-O-E-I, uh, of any energy gathering system is a measure of that system's efficiency. That's what E-R-O-E-I is. It's how efficient you use energy and how you gather it and the efficiency of gathering it. Uh, in today's energy mix, hydroelectric power and nuclear power have values greater than 50. Uh, oil and natural gas are greater than 20 uh, today. Uh, there are some that are 100 uh, in terms of oil and natural gas, but those were all found many years ago. One takeaway is the energy return on energy invested. Society needs a value greater than seven. Uh, that means that your, your gathering ability uh, exceeds the requirements of what an advanced society has. It has to be greater than seven because if it's lower than seven, all you're going to do is gather energy for the necessities in life. And everyone will be deploying all of their efforts to gather energy and energy only. At the other end of the scale, solar photovoltaics and biofuels have values less than five. Wind turbines uh, could be in the teens. Just, just for renewables, just to let you know that. So what is it? You know, let's, let's get down in the dirty here. Uh, EREI is simply the ratio of energy gathered to the amount of energy used to gather the energy. So it's just energy gathered divided by the energy invested to gather that energy. And you have to have a large split there so uh, energy can be used to do other things uh, and work in society. Because if, if, if you're coming down to the energy gathered approaching the energy invested, you're just, you have no free energy to do any work with. You're just gathering energy to, to gather energy. Uh, and so it says, in fact, humans produce very little energy, but what distinguishes us from other species is that we have become very efficient at gathering energy that already exists and building machines that can convert the energy to goods, motor cars, TVs, computers, whatever it may be, uh, and services that collectively define our wealth. And this is why it's an important to understand this. The prosperity of humanity depends upon the efficiency with which we gather energy. A hundred years ago uh, and 50 years ago, we hit several jackpots from, in the form of vast coal, oil, and gas, natural gas deposits. Uh, but these super giant deposits are now to varying degrees being used up. They are depleting. Uh, it is apparent that we may be committing energy and economic suicide by deliberately moving away from fossil fuels to these very low energy return on energy invested uh, alternatives. But the global energy system is now dictated by climate concern and any scheme that pretends to produce energy with no CO2 is embraced by policymakers everywhere and financial arrangements are put in place to enable deployment regardless of energy return on energy invested. And in the next clip will show this. The red sector is the energy invested. This is, the blue is the energy that is available to society. As you move farther, uh, as you move further to the right, you can see this decline where you get below, this is about seven right here. Any of these below seven really aren't worth pursuing. So solar full of italics, wind turbine buffered is in here. None of these work. You're gonna have to go with high altitude kite wind turbines. Coal is up here, natural gas is up here. Nuclear power is all throughout here depending on how you gather it. And uh, world oil, we, we were up here when we first started producing oil and we've been diving down this cliff we call it the energy cliff, where we're using more and more oil to get less and less oil in return. 
So this is world oil, and we're, we're using this, you know, that's right around the 7, 8 mark. So this is what the difficulty is when going to renewables, is because you're, li you're literally going to starve a society of energy if you put in a whole bunch of renewables. You're also using your high energy return, energy invested oil, and natural gas and coal to put in very low, we'll call it energy sinks. It's, it's a completely backwards way of looking at something to use your high quality uh, energy to get low quality energy return. And it's being subsidized. Renewables are being subsidized right now at least uh, with fossil fuel uh, high energy densities. So the key and fundamental observation from figure six is that higher energy potentials exist with these below uh, that can sustain society. And these are the ones that are, th that can sustain an advanced society right now. Nuclear, high wind, coal, and natural gas. A lot other further development needs to happen with solar panels and all these other renewables. Well, there's also, I mean, there are, are other renewables that are good um, in terms of water and, and hydro and stuff. Um, so the conclusion here, we have a couple of conclusion pages. Uh, we've had very high energy return on energy invested with oil, natural gas, and coal historically, exceptionally high. Uh, it is part of human nature to high grade mineral deposits targeting the richest seams first. So we've produced from the richest, uh, most fertile grounds of oil, natural gas, and coal. We've already used up the highest fossil fuel resources and as time passes the ERUI of new resources is steadily falling. We're going down that energy cliff. This translates to higher price required to bring on that marginal barrel of oil. And it's not just the higher prices, it's the lower energy return on energy invested. So uh, the greatest risk to human society today is the notion that we can somehow replace high energy return on energy invested fossil fuels with new renewable energies like solar photovoltaics and biofuels. These exist within the energy web because they are subsidized by the coexisting high ERUI fossil fuels. Fossil fuels provide the monetary wealth to pay the subsidies. Society is at great risk from greens promoting the new renewable agenda to politicians and school children, willist ignoring the thermodynamic impossibility of current solar photovoltaic techno technology and biofuels ever being able to power human society unaided. Wind power, and in particular high altitude wind power, uh, they need to be sustained without subsidies from fossil fuels. It is proposed that money was invented as a means of exchange for the work energy does on our behalf. That is a huge sentence there and hopefully you can understand that. Um, Remove all subsidies, then money may represent a fair proxy for energy return on energy invested. However, in the real world, different currencies, interest rates, debts, taxes, and subsidies exist that allow the thermodynamic rules of the energy world to be bent. I'll bet temporarily uh, we are at risk of exchanging gold for dirt in terms of fossil fuels for low energy return, energy invested renewables. So here's some fun facts. This is the last slide. 3.125 million photovoltaic panels equals one gigawatt of power. 430 wind turbines can replace a one gigawatt plant on a, if that's if they're producing all of the, the power that is needed. Uh, it may have to be multiples of that if you want a reliable one gigawatt of power. Renewables have not provided reliable power, need an energy storage system with renewables, and has led to more natural gas being used for power generation so natural gas is subsidizing all of the renewables, not only in them being built, but also in them operating. Keep in mind that solar is an energy sink, not an energy addition because of the low energy return on energy invested, and it is being subsidized by fossil fuels. We need better technology to live the life we have today. So, hopefully this ties some other loose ends up. Uh, I know it, it, some, some people's paradigms are, are, are getting challenged here. Money, 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 money. And we have currency too, but currency, the paper form, 
the Federal Reserve notes, is actually an exchange for future work, for future energy, so to speak. And if you wrap your head around this, then everything makes sense. If we go down the route of renewables that have this low of energy return energy invested and their energy sinks, one, we, we, we use up all of the high uh, energy return energy invested fossil fuels to produce garbage. And two, if we put a bunch of garbage in and it can't sustain society, that will ruin your currency. Because if the currency is backed by future work or energy and you're putting in things that can't return enough, your energy will decline over time. And if your energy declines over time, that means that your currency, which requires ever greater increases of debt, will fail. Does that make sense? Stock markets are predicated off of future earnings growth. They are valued, a PE ratio, a price to earnings ratio of 50 means that you're paying 50 years worth of earnings. If energy is more scarce 50, you know, between now and 50 years, then that stock is overvalued because they're valuing future earnings to be larger than it is today. The work and the energy is what backs a currency. The currency, if you have energy problems, <laughs> goes away. Now, another way to look at precious metals is precious metals is a stored unit of energy because energy had to, had to go into producing gold, silver, platinum. When energy becomes scarce, those metals will go up in price because their energy sinks, their, their stores of energy, so to speak. So owning physical precious metals protects you from currency debasement, but it protects you from energy scarcity as well. Physical precious metals protects you in so many things that it's, and, and it's a, it's a risk-free bet. It, precious metals have lower risk than cash. And I know people look at the up and down movements and they don't correlate that because cash is more stable. But cash has lost 99.9% .9 of its purchasing power over time. Precious metals have, have not lost any. In fact, they've gained in purchasing power. Um, they've gained in purchasing power against mass produced items because they're produced at lower rates than mass produced items. Therefore, they've increased their purchasing power over time. Precious metals are the lowest risk bet when you can buy them undervalued in relationship to money supply, in relationship to Dow, in relationship to you know, stocks, in relationship to everything in society. And right now, they are financially and energy undervalued against other assets, which makes them, in my opinion, the best bet with the lowest risk. They are asymmetric bets with the lowest risk possible. If you like this, uh, this clip, please subscribe to the channel. I have a lot more content coming out that is similar to this content. Uh, and please click the thumbs up button. Thank you for listening.